What's up again everybody, today I'm going to share my version of a deck that has absolutely lived rent-free in my brain for over two months, and it all centers around this card. Surgent Aethertide is a majestic wizard staff from Dynasty that deals one damage for two resources. If it deals damage, it buffs the next arcane spell you play by one. But wait, isn't that just a worse version of Crucible of Aetherweave? Well, not if you combine it with physical attacks. Here's what I mean. Say you start your turn by activating Surgeon Aether Tide to deal one arcane damage. Your opponent then pitches a blue, floating two for later arcane barrier usage, and stops your buff. Bad, right? Maybe so, but now they have a three card hand, and you can play something like Life for a Life. It threatens four physical damage, one point of life gain on hit, and almost always has go again attached because we are but a squishy wizard. All of a sudden that pitch card is all but wasted and they are taking damage or donating more of their hand to stop damage. This is our game plan for the deck, and as I said, the general play line has been living rent-free in my brain for two months ever since Tog from We Make Best posted his version of the deck in Classic Constructed. Since then, I've wondered if the deck could be functional in a faster Blitz format, so I finally pushed aside some other plans, built and tweaked my own version of this deck, and tested it out. Spoiler alert, it works. Here's the equipment that we need. Obviously, we are running Surgeon Aethertide, and we also want Ragamuffin's Hat, for the endgame combos that we can end up setting up. Tunic is for the longer matchups, Spellfire Cloak is for the shorter matchups, Metacarpus Node is for everything because that is basically Crucible of Aetherweave on our kill turns, and Storm Striders because they're the best. If you don't have Storm Striders, just play Mage Master Boots and then stack two spells on one turn to try and gain massive tempo, or play a large red spell plus a large attack to really push the damage. Throw some blocking equipment into the sideboard and let's get to the deck. Let's talk attacks first. We run 11 physical attacks, two CNCs, two Adrenaline Rush, two Scar for a Scar, two Life for a Life, one Humble, one Drone of Brutality, and one E-Strike. All of these are red, and most of these either push a breakpoint, have go again, or have a solid on hit. Adrenaline Rush is truly the star here. Off of one blue, we can swing life for a life into Adrenaline Rush for 11 damage total and one point of life gain attached. Again, shout out to We Make Best for that three card combo. It feels incredible to play. Feel free to play around with the numbers and the distribution of attacks here, but I don't recommend going too much further into the uh, physical attacks. Probably no more than 12 to 13. I've found this particular mix to feel just right for me. On to the red spells, of which we play two Aether Quickening, two Aether Spindle, and one Blazing Aether. Not too many red spells here, so you really want to use them sparingly in your slow matchups. And in race matchups, just throw them out there and get their value as soon as possible, or hold on to one of them in Arsenal to try and striders it out for the win on your opponent's turn. This gives us 16 reds with two sink belows added in. That puts us to 18 reds total in the deck. It's a bit high for my tastes in Kano, but it works. To pad out the spells, let's include two copies of Lesson in Lava and two copies of Mind Warp. Lesson is how we close out games. Physical attacks will take their cards on our turn, and then Lesson into a spell into Blazing Aether is hopefully how we win the game. And Mind Warp is super underrated. It pitches yellow, it blocks for three, it deals two damage for zero, which is above rate, and in a race, the surge effect absolutely mangles opposing hands. It's just above rate for a free off the top of the deck spell on lethal turns as well that you can just go and fetch with Lesson in Lava. Finally, the blues. We run 18 blues to balance out the 18 reds and all of them do something great for us. Three potions help us find weird lethals with extra resources or by doing deja vu shenanigans and then Eye of Ophidia is an absolute MVP in the deck for opting the top and shifting and sifting through the attacks to find some spells and Kano targets. And every other blue card in there deals some amount of damage. And with that, the deck is done. 
Now here are some tips for playing it. Always go second. We push physical damage and we rip cards and we are playing a class that no one expects that in. That's very good because everybody sideboards out their equipment that can block and sideboards in Arcane Barrier. So if we can be the first to present real palpable threats where they can't free refill their hand, then we can gain huge tempo. If you are forced to go first, then I would play a potion if you have it. I would play effects that allow you to dig through your deck, maybe like free Kano's off the top and see what you have. Um, activate Surgent, pass and set up an arsenal. You wanna play a five card hand and uh, really push the tempo by taking some damage on their first turn. Only activate Kano with advantage. What does that mean? Well, think about it. The deck misses Kano off the top a lot. There are 11 attacks plus extra things in there that just miss. So only activate Kano at the end of the turn when you don't want to arsenal like a blue card and you just have an extra resource floating to pay for a spell you might find off the top. In general, avoid activating Kano on your opponent's turn unless you have an idea of what's already there on top of your deck or you just have carte blanche and they don't have a hand so you can just deal them damage if you find something. And finally, think of this deck like playing Runeblade or playing Emperor. Both of those heroes and classes play in this very specific way where your opponent doesn't necessarily know how best to deal with the turn that's being presented. Sometimes it's arcane damage, sometimes it's physical damage. Bleed your life totals down together and set up a deterministic lethal with Storm Striders. So for some quick examples of what this deck can actually do, here's, a, here's a, just a very easy example. So for example, here we have this drawn hand that literally just started the game. Um, we're gonna pitch the uh, Aether Dart so that we can represent one damage. Assuming they block this, which they almost always do against just about anybody we're playing, that is okay because we can follow it up with Scar for Scar with Go Again. Again, we start at 15. This will almost always have Go Again, particularly at the beginning of the game, so it represents four damage that they just have to deal with. At that point, you then have a question. Because we pitched a blue, two for this, one for Lesson and Lava feels really good. Now, this could either go for three or four, um, and in doing so, going for three or four, uh, we are representing certain break points. But in this hand, we can set the top of our deck, something like, uh, I don't know, we could threaten like Aether Spindle, which is really fun. Uh, and then we can Arsenal a Sink Below, which feels really, really good. Like that on turn two, of which I almost always choose to go uh, second, feels great. Uh, if I want to chuck something in front of this, I could just as easily do that. But um, if they threaten, I don't know, let's say going second and we give them our hand on turn one, uh, we take two to three cards out of their hand. If they're sending four to five damage, we can just sink below or just give them a card. Um, so let's just assume we're going to sink below here. We're going to keep the hand because why not let it fly? And uh, we can present awkward amounts of damage. So here we'd have a couple of choices. If we're playing in the aggro matchup, we would pitch the energy potion so that we could uh, consider maybe playing mind warp or aether spindle. If we're playing into a control thing, we're definitely pitching the mind warp and seeing what they do. If they block it, we could present easy damage um, with like a uh, drone of brutality, for example, is it like just straight up for six. And then we can arsenal aether spindle. Feels really good to do that. If we're playing against the aggro matchup, then just chucking this aether Aether Spindle for five and setting the top of our deck feels real good. So we're going to do that. Let's pretend that we're playing the aggro matchup here. And then we get to see the top five cards of our deck, which is great because uh, if we look at these top five cards, knowing we're going to arsenal the drone, uh, we could top all of these and put this on the, uh, the as the fifth card. And then we could uh, maybe do some canoing off of that. Um, in this scenario, being the, the faster kind of lane, we could just go like this. We're going to draw those four, and then we can try to set up something where we Kano from here if we're trying to race. Now, uh, remember, this deck has a tendency to not hit Kano's because we're running more attacks. So let's just, um, let's just assume that they aren't attacking here and we could like respond to this. If we, let's just go ahead and pass real quick. If we had a hand like this and we wanted to Kano off the top, there is a really decent chance that this Kano is nothing. So let's just prove it for a fact that it is nothing. Oh, it turned out it was the Blazing Aether. I forgot this was the Blazing Aether that we set. I'm talking about the next one. So if we wanted to set up a combo, like there's a good chance that this card is nothing, uh, which means that if we're setting this Blazing, we would have to do something with like a Voltic Bolt or this Reverberate. 
Uh, and so instead of like Kanoing the second time for this combo, then we would want to consider maybe like pumping into a Voltic Bolt and then uh, Blazing Aether off of that. Let's say they have no AB, they're not looking to do any of that sort of thing. Uh, then we could possibly like uh, break Storm Striders here uh, with Reverberate and uh, pass and then play Voltic Bolt and then pass and then sink something into it and then pass and then play Blazing Aether and then not pay into it. And then we represent, um, you know, like seven damage on their turn, right? So at this point, we've represented a bunch of damage that they've either respected or not respected. Um, and if they are playing a lot more slow and we revert, revert to the start of this turn, uh, the other option would be just to simply block just to simply block and we know the blazing is there and so we could literally just um, you know tuck a blue if we wanted to and draw the blazing which is fine uh, and then we can present a turn like this where we go Kano or sorry not Kano uh, Aether Tide um, we technically could Kano here which would be advantageous to do because we're not going to want to do anything with this blue uh, we could so we could Kano here to see what's there and if it's nothing like Enlightened Strike here we're fine because we're still going to take the Tunic resource and we're still going to play the Drone of Brutality, which means we can then, after dealing six damage or whatever they block, Arsenal Blazing. And at this point, when you Arsenal something like a Blazing, you can Storm Striders Blazing on a turn where you find like Lesson in Lava, um, plus some other spells, or Aether Quickening, plus some other spells on their turn. Uh, you can throw those things using like Ragamuffin's Hat and the normal Kano stuff and then finish it off with Storm Strider's Blazing Aether. And that's basically how the deck wants to play out. It's a lot of fun. Try it out for yourself and see what you think. Again, huge credit for the base idea of this deck goes to We Make Best. I really recommend going and watching their uh, classic constructed deck tech. I'm gonna put a link up there and a link in the description as well. And if you want this deck list, the link will be in the comments at some point but my patrons already have access to both the deck list and a copy of everything I've said here, along with the old deck lists that I've posted previous to this. So if you'd like to support the channel, feel free to do so and make numbers climb slightly higher. If you enjoy this shortened version of a deck tech, let me know in a comment below and what deck you would like to see next. Would you like to see Fatigue Azuri? Would you like to see the most ridiculous UPF Riptide I've ever built? Let me know in a comment below. As always, thanks for watching.